Hello and welcome to the video. This is Matthew and we're going to be looking at question 8 from the 2021 Leaving Certificate Earning Level Paper 2. This is a 50 mark question and it mainly involves area and volume. There is a good bit of algebra in the question as well, so a good knowledge on both topics is required. Overall, it is a balanced question that can be tricky in parts. So let's take a closer look. So we're starting with question 8a and question 8 we're given a diagram of a plan of a lake and we're told that the line segment PQ is the distance from the pier P to the far side of the lake. There are equal intervals of 10 meters made along the line and then perpendicular measures made to the sides of the lake as is shown in the diagram. So now let's have a look at a part 1. So a part 1 is worth 15 marks and we have to use the trapezoidal rule to estimate the surface area of the lake. So the trapezoidal rule is in our formula and tables book on page 12. Now you may know it, but I always recommend just to go back to the, to the tables book just to make sure that you have it correct as it's long enough and there is a few things that you might, there's maybe one or two things that you might forget. So let's have a look. So as I said, it's on page 12 of the formula and tables book and it's this first formula here, the trapezoidal rule. So H is the interval between each of the perpendicular measures and then Y1 is the first measure, Yn is the final measure and then we're going to multiply and then we're going to start going to add to that uh, two times the rest of the measures plus together. So let's go back to our question now and we'll work out our H or Y1 or Yn and all the other Ys and fill them into the formula. So we can tell straight away that our H for the first, so we're going to have to split this up by the way. So we're going to have to split up our diagram or the lake into two separate parts. So we're going to have the piece above PQ and then the bit of below PQ, and then we're going to add both of our answers together as the trapezoidal rule will only cover, you know, it'll only cover one side. We do it singly, so we're going to just do it twice and then plus both of our answers together. So we're going to focus on the top half first, and then we'll do the bottom half after. So for the top half first, so it's going to be A is equal to H over 2, and we know that H is now 10, so A is equal to 10 over 2. And then Y1 is going to be 0, as at the start there, it doesn't go up, there's no height, so it's just going to be 0. And the last Y, which is going to be the last perpendicular measure, is also 0 over at Q, as there's no line up at Q, it just, you know, it's just at 0, so it's going to be 0 plus 0. And then we're going to plus 2 times by all of the other perpendicular measures between P and Q there. So it's going to be 20 plus 10 plus 30 plus 30 plus 20. As I said, the answer we get will be multiplied by 2. So 10 over 2 is obviously 5. 0 plus 0 so 0 is going to be 2 times and then 20 plus 10 plus 30 plus 30 plus 20 is 110 so it's going to be 5 times 2 times 110 and if we put that in the calculator if we work it out ourselves we get so 2 times 110 is 220 and then 5 times 220 is 1100 so that's of the top half so now let's do the one on the bottom half again it's going to be the same rule just we'll have different values for y but h should be the same so now our first y isn't 0 it's 10 so this 10 here so see what I mean when the line comes down? So it doesn't start off at 0 as it did in the, in the top half, it's starting off with 10. But then the last y is, is going to be 0 again as there's no line up, uh, down from the cube at the end there. So it's just going to be 10 plus 0 plus 2 times uh, the rest of the measurements in between. So it's going to be uh, 2 times, so 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20. So that's obviously going to be, uh, so 10 over 2 is just 5, then 10 plus 0 is just 10, so it's going to be 10 plus 2 times 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 10 plus 20 which is in fact a 90, so it's going to be 5 times by 10 plus 2 times 90. So now obviously 2 times 90 is 180, plus 10 is 190, and then 5 times 190 is 950. So now we're going to add the top half and the bottom half together, so 1,100 meters squared plus 950 meters squared, and then we'll get 2,050 meters squared, which is the answer that we are looking for. So now we've got the area from the top half, or we've got an estimation of the area of the top half of the lake, 1,100 meters squared. And we've also got an estimation of the bottom half of the lake, which is 950 meters squared. So to get the total estimated surface area of the lake, we're just going to add both of those together. And adding both of those together, we get 2,050 meters squared. And there we have it. That's our answer for A part 1 of the question. So now we can move on to uh, A part 2. And A part 2 is worth 5 marks. So the question is saying that if the lake is on average 8 metres deep, we have to estimate the volume of water in the lake. So we know that the surface area is 2,050 metres squared, and it's telling us that it's on average 8 metres deep, so that means that there's going to be 8 metres of that. So we're just going to multiply that answer by 8, and then we'll get 16,400 metres cubed. So there we have it. That's straightforward to know. Very simple. That's our answer for A part 2. So now let's move on to part B of the question. So B part 1 is also worth 5 marks. So the question wants us to find in centimetres cubed the volume of some hemisphere with radius 21 centimetres, giving our answer in terms of pi. 
So we're going to have a look in our formula table so we can find the uh, formula for the volume of a sphere then just half that. So we're not going to be able to find the formula for the volume of a hemisphere but if we just half the volume of a regular sphere that will give us the formula for the volume of a hemisphere. So it's on page 10 of our formula and tables book so let's have a look. So as I said it's on page 10 and the formula for a sphere is this one right here. But just be careful, that is the formula for, for a sphere, not a hemisphere. So we're going to have to half that now for the question that we have. So we know that the formula for a regular sphere is the volume is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. But we're going to multiply this by a half as it's a hemisphere. So we have uh, 4 over 3 times by half, which is just 4 over 6 or 2 over 3. Uh, the pi just stays as pi. And then we know that the radius is 21 centimeters, so it's 21 cubed. So now working this out, we get 6,174 pi centimeters cubed. And that's our answer for B part one, the volume in centimeter cubed of some hemisphere with radius 21 centimeters. So again, quite straightforward. And once you remembered to uh, half the formula for the volume of sphere, you know, you're well on your way to getting your answer for that question. So now let's have a look at B part two. So B part two, so the question tells us that there's some buoy on a lake in the shape of a hemisphere with radius 21 centimeters. On top of that is a cone and it's telling us that the volume of the cone is equal to the volume of the hemisphere. And now it wants us to find H, the total height of the buoy. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to work out the form uh, the, the volume of the cone in terms of H. So we'll have a H in the answer and then put that equal to the volume of the hemisphere, which we got in the previous question. And then from that, we'll be able to solve for H. So we're going to have a look again at our formula and tables book on page 10 for the formula for the volume of a cone. And the formula for the volume of a cone is 1 over 3 pi r squared h. And you know, of course we have r but we don't have h so h is what we're trying to work out. So as I said it's 1 over 3 pi r squared h. And before we do the rest of the question just to let you know it's worth 10 marks. So filling in so we know that the radius is 21 so it's going to be 1 over 3 pi 21 squared h. So 21 squared is 441 and 441 multiplied by 1 over 3 is 147. So then we get the volume is equal to 147 pi times by h. So that's the volume of the cone. So now we're going to put that equal to the volume of the hemisphere as we're told that they're equal. And then from that we'll be able to solve for h. So we worked out in B part 1 that the volume of the hemisphere is 6174 pi. So now both pi's will cancel each other out. So then we're left with 147h is equal to 6174. So now dividing both sides by 147, we'll get h is equal to 6174 divided by 147. And that will give us 41.816 centimetres. And we're going to plus the 21 centimetres radius. That's the height of the hemisphere. As we know that the 21 is 21 centimetres is the radius, which must mean that the height of the hemisphere is also 21. So therefore it's going to be 41.816 plus 21 which gives us 62.816 centimetres, and that's the height of our buoy. You might want to round that up to 63, but we're not asked to round it up, so we can leave it as that. So now we're going to move on to the final part of the question, which is part C. So part C is worth 15 marks, and it tells us that the buoy is situated at B, 43 metres from the pier P, and 26 metres from the point Q, as shown in the diagram above. So it wants us to find the angle QBP, the angle at the buoy shown on the diagram, so the angle right here. And we have to give our answer correct at two decimal places. So it's the triangle PBQ. And when we have a triangle like this to work out the an, an angle, so we have three of the sides, we can use the cosine rule. Now, if this was a right angled triangle, we'd be able to just use uh, the trigonometric ratio, so sine, cos, or tan, but it's not, which means we have to use the cosine rule. So don't get mixed up using sine, cos, tan on this one, as that is a common mistake. So just make sure to use the cosine rule, which is in the formula and tables book on page 16. So let's just have a look at it now. So as I said, this is page 16, and it's this formula right here that we're looking for, the cosine rule. As we have three sides, and we're just trying to work out the angle. So we can't use the sine rule, as for the sine rule, you need at least one angle, but we, we don't have any angles. So then we can use the cosine rule as we have three sides, we're trying to work out the angle. So A, small a, is the side across from the angle, we, big A, and then small b and small c are the other two sides, and then a capital A is the angle, either the angle we have or the angle that we're trying to work out. So obviously in this case, it's the angle that we're trying to work out. The only important thing is that small a and uh, large a, so the angle large a is across from the side small a that's the only thing and then b and c are just the two other sides in any order so let's go back to our question now and we'll fill in small a small b and small c but remember we don't have capital a that's what we're trying to work out okay 
So just starting it off. So we know that it's a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So a, so a is the side directly across from the angle. So our side directly across from the angle here is 60, as you can see there. So that means it's 60 squared and then b squared and c squared. So we're going to say that b is 43 squared or b is 43 and then it's b squared, so 43 squared. And then c is going to be 26, so it's uh, 26 squared. So minus 2bc, so minus 2 times by 43 times by 26 cos a and a is what we're trying to work out. So we just have to solve this and get the angle a and then we'll be able to work out the angle qbp. So 60 squared is 3600 and that's equal to 1849 plus 676 minus 2236 cos a. So then we get 3600 so 1849 plus 676 is 2525 and it's still going to be minus 2236 cos a. So now we're going to minus 2,225 for both sides so that we can get rid of the 2,225 on the right hand side. So then we get 1,075 is equal to minus 2,236 cos A. So we're going to divide both sides by minus 2,236 to get 1,075 over minus 2,236 and that's equal to cos A. And now we can just do cos inverse of 1,075 over minus 2,236 and that'll be equal to the angle A. So we're going to work this out in the calculator now. So we click shift cos and put in the fraction 1075 over minus 2236. Then we get the angle 118.7356537 but correct to two decimal places as 118.74. Now one thing I will say is if you don't get the answer then your calculator is probably in radians so just to make sure to switch it to degrees it's a very common mistake and that's probably why you're getting a different answer to me if you have everything else the same. So make sure that you see the D at the top and not an OR, because if it's an OR, that means your calculator is in radians. So there we have our answer, 118.74 degrees. And that's your answer, as I said, for part C. It's the answer for the final part of the question, and it's the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope I helped.